Hi, gang. We left off with uh, creating the tables for our design here. Uh, we created the tables, but we didn't populate them. So what we're going to do now is populate all the tables and then go into the reports and the SQL statements um, for the store procedures and triggers. Here we're just populating the tables. One thing that you want to make sure is that if you have any type of data that is uh, of a secure nature, you want to make sure that you uh, keep it secure and don't allow uh, data to be in clear text format. So in other words, uh, here in the person table, uh, we don't want to allow a user to, um, if they have gain access to the person table, however they gain access to it, we don't want them uh, even administrators, we don't want them to be able to see the social security number in clear text format. You would do the same thing with credit card numbers, anything of a sensitive nature. Um, you just hash those values. Also, another thing is you want to make sure that if you're um, uh, transporting data over a network, you want to make sure that you use an SSL connection um, because you don't want that over an unsecured network. So here's how... I lost this for a minute, and it should be coming back. Good. There it was. See how uh, SQL Server does that? It will uh, try to gain back that connection. I'm glad you saw that. Um, here what we're going to do is convert. We have a SHA-2-512 hash value for the um, uh, the text T-E-S-T, and we're going to convert it to binary. We do it like this. I'm going to, here's all the code that we used for um, the tables. I'm just going to write over all that, paste it in there, and do F5. And you could see here um, that it is now uh, in a um, hashed format here. Okay? It's a hash 5, 512, um, SHA-2-512 hash value. But what we want to do now is also see the length when we uh, convert it to binary. Rather than 128 bytes, it's only going to consume 64, as you will see here. Just exactly the way we did it in um, MySQL. A little bit different. So you can see here it's 64. It's going to consume 64 uh, storage bytes. Okay, so let's once we've done that, this is how you would actually enter the data using the person table. You would use the hash bytes function, SHA-2 uh, SHA uh, underscore 512. And then here we're just going to give a, uh, this is just an example. There is no social security number here. We're just, uh, I'm just using the uh, alphanumeric values of test one, test two, test three. But you could do the same thing with a social security number. Uh, because we're, we're going to be consuming 64 uh, bytes of storage space. So uh, going back to the person table, just to take a quick look at it, going back to the person table, um, you see that we're storing the social security number in binary 64. Okay? Uh, and also one thing, the other thing is we're allowing it to be null. And the reason why we're allowing it to be null is because we're putting in the, the values after it's created. So there it is, uh, so security number binary 64. We're putting in the values after it was created. Okay, so um, I have more than 10. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 records for person, and we said we needed at least, what do we say in the requirements? Again, I get my requirements confused sometimes. Uh, where is it? Okay, include at least 10 unique records in the person table. I um, I did it like another assignment. I just included 15. Here they are right here, and what we're going to do is um, I'm going to include all of these at the end. So I'm just going to copy and paste them. But I'm, what I'm going to do is highlight them so that you can see um, the data. And um, what I would encourage you to do is put the data in exactly the way I have it right here. Again, you don't need 15. 10 will do. Uh, but 
primarily is to show you how to put it into convert it to SHA two five twelve hash value and then uh, convert it into binary to uh, uh, essentially give us uh, um, uh, half the storage space that we would normally need if we didn't convert it to binary. And then you could do your select all from DBO person to make sure the data is in there. I highly encourage you to do that for each one of these. Here's sales rep, the values for sales rep. Uh, remember, gang, sales rep is a subtype. So because it has a foreign key, I cannot auto-increment them, right? I can auto-increment on a person table. Uh, I cannot auto-increment on customer or sales rep because the it has a dual functionality. The PER underscore ID and customer and sales rep are not only primary keys, they are also foreign keys. Okay, so there's sales rep. Let's go next to the um, next table here, and that is customer. So I'll pause on customer. Notice I'm doing the same thing here, doing DBO and customer. And you can see them both right there. There's sales rep and customer, and then I do a select all just to make sure the data is in there. You could pause it. Um, same thing with contact. Notice how the data is put in there as far as the date, data type. Okay. Same just as you would normally do that with MySQL. Notice order. Be careful with order because it is a keyword. It has to be in brackets. Okay. And then select all. Make sure order is in brackets. Store. There's store. Five records. Invoice. I have more than that. I like to put more sometimes in my, just to see what kind of report, what kind of query result sets I get back for my reports. Vendor. Uh, product. Order line. Payment, product history, sales rep history, and so a couple things about the uh, sales rep history, and I put this in comments here. So, number one, if you just want to get the year only from the history table, you could do something like this. Use the year function like that. Um, difference between system user and original login. By the way, there's a number of different users. A number of different users. I'm only using two here. And so, notice in the sales rep history, in the history tables, we always try to make sure that everything is done automatically as, as best as we can. Um, <clears throat> So here, um, we're using system underscore user and original underscore login, two separate different uh, functions that will give us this. The system user represents, or, or I should say, presents you with the credentials used to run the query. This is important to establish which permissions were active. The original login uh, is giving you the user with which the connection was established. In other words, who logged in? And that's probably here. Uh, both of these would be important. But here I, I show you from the documentation that I read myself uh, is why both would be important. So the pro for using a system user, a system underscore user, is that you can see with which permissions a query was executed. The con is you don't know who originally created the connection, right? So really, you want to see who established that connection. And you may want to use see both of these. You may want to include both of them in your history table. The original login, pro, you see who created the connection, but the con is you don't know um, with which permissions the query was actually executed. Also, one other thing, gang. I have this link here, this URL, to indicate the difference between an order and an invoice. So that when you look at this, you could see what the difference is between an order and an invoice. It's a pretty good article, and I think that you, you'll find it interesting uh, just uh, 
by uh, checking out that URL. All right, gang. Well, here's all the data. We're going to begin the reports in another video. Uh, but here what I'm going to do is um, just go to all the data that we're going to try to enter here and see what happens. So we're going to start with person, insert the data, do a select all on person, store, etc., 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 all the way to the sales rep history. Okay, and then I'll even show the year for the how you would show a year value. Copy that. Go here. I might have. I'm not going to use um, my database. I'm going to see if if I have to do it. I may it may give me an error. No. Okay. Kept that. I kept that. Um, command from my previous connection. So gang, notice the person table and the uh, values that are displayed here. Uh, again, masking the true uh, value of, of, say, if it was a uh, social security number, right? Um, and here are the other tables. You can see that they're all populated. You could just scroll down here and see that, in fact, all the tables are populated with data. Okay. Oh, and there's the uh, showing the year. The year right there. Just getting that from the here. So, sales so history, get date. Okay. You could see from this history table that I'm uh, getting the date. Who is the, notice it's showing the same, the same values here, right? For uh, system user versus original login. I logged in with it, and I'm also was the creator uh, of this these tables. Uh, the dates here are today's date, um, and notice again by using the year function here, I just was able to glean the year value right here. Okay, got all the year values for the uh, sales history, sales his. Uh, I'm sorry, sales rep history table. Okay, all right, gang, uh, we're gonna stop here and begin our reports in another video. So that was just creating and populating the tables.